Shumai Gazgios, Johnny VR here with my review for the last but one episode of Doctor Who Series 12, uh, Ascension of the Cybermen. Uh, Cybermen. And before we get into it, uh, quick announcements. First, um, again, we're still doing our giveaway when we reach a thousand subs. So um, if you're watching this video, if you like um, this video, go check out the rest of the channel. Um, and if you like it, go on, help us out and give us a subscription, you know. Because um, we are doing a giveaway to, for a Comic Con that we're going to this year. Um, and speaking of Comic Cons, uh, Shaq's CooperCon video is coming out tomorrow, so make sure you stick around for that. Um, yeah, and here we go. We're going to go into this um, review. Every uh, everything in the first part is going to be spoiler free, so I'll give you like a spoiler warning when I start going into the details of the episode. Um, so yeah, Ascension of the Cybermen. Um, it's I think it's a solid episode. It doesn't, it sort of doesn't go the way, like, you might be expecting, like, because it was, it was hugely sort of bigged up by, you know, Chris Chibnall and the BBC, but it is, it is good. It's a very good episode. Um, it, I like how it sets up a great finale, you know, a potentially great finale that apparently is going to change everything. The setup is still there, it's still good. There's a lot of mystery, a lot of mystery in this episode. It will have you asking a lot of questions before next uh, next week's episode. The Cybermen are really cool um, in this. There's a lot of good um, shots in this, you know, a lot, lots of good um, cool cinematography. Um, and the CGI is quite good as well. Like, so for example, like in the previous episodes, if you thought the CGI was a bit dodgy, then probably it's because they they put a lot of the budget into this episode. And who knows, maybe next uh, episode as well, because it was very good. It was very cool to watch. The sense of scale in this episode is, is there. It's a good cat and mouse um, episode. And whereas like, for example, in Spyfall, you had multiple locations across the world, and even in Praxis as well, which to give it that sense of a global uh, sense. This this sort of scale is more like a universal scale. Like it, you go to a lot of places. There's a lot of locations, um, but you know it, it it really does feel like um, uh, an otherworldly sort of episode. Um, and with a with a threat of you know in the universe, so it, it there's a lot of good universe building here, and it's not just like it's not like it's on Earth, you know, you know all the time like the rest of the um, episodes have been. Really cool, uh, really cool episode. Uh, the lone Cyberman who we were introduced to in the last episode, having been established as sort of um, uh, an emotionally an emotional Cyberman. He, he really gets to, to sort of play with this in this episode. It's really cool. He, you know, it just, it just sort of opens up so much to, more to do with the, um, uh, to do with the Cybermen than you could do if they were like emotionally dead. Um, this was an episode of two halves, okay? So at some times, so at points throughout the episode, you might think in, you might be thinking, well, what is going on here? How has this got any relevance to it? Um, but it, 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 it's sort of like multiple things are happening in this episode and they, it sort of all comes together in a cliffhanger that's, again, it's a pretty solid cliffhanger. Um, the, it, it's a solid cliffhanger that doesn't have as much of a shock or surprise as other reveals in this in this series has done, but it's solid, you know, and, and I don't I don't think anyone will be disappointed with this cliffhanger, because I'm not. I thought, you know, job done, set up the finale in a great way. Um, so yeah, I'm going to talk about my, um, uh, like, other parts of the episode now. So here's your spoiler warning. Uh, go watch the episode, because it is good, and come back and see what I give this episode uh, as a score at the end. So... Here's your spoiler warning. At the start of the episode, we do get a cold open, which is really cool. Like nice little monologue from uh, the lone Cyberman, and they do a really nice trick to set up the opening titles. You know, where they go in through the eye of the Cyberman head floating through space. Really cool. It sets it up for a uh, for a really cool episode. But then immediately, 
it sort of changes on its head. And this is what the first part of what I was saying was when it's sort of an episode of two halves. We sort of end up with this um, Ireland place, you know, like a place in Ireland. Um, uh, and you get this man riding a bike, he finds a baby. And at first you're thinking like, hmm, something's wrong here. Who is this baby? Because he's just been left on the road. And then they bring him in, they adopt him, and they name him Brendan. Um, the music in in this scene is is great, you know, really um, folky and like you know, it really goes well with um, the sort of the farmhouse um, uh, lifestyle of of Brendan and his and his mum and dad or his adopted mum and dad. And obviously, you're, if you're wondering like, hmm, how does this all throughout the episode, you're like, hmm, how does this play into this? Because every now and again, it just pops up a little bit extra. Um, about his his life like for example it's like little snapshots of his life um and then right at the end they do a quite a big plot twist and we don't get many answers so at the end i'm still left with like thinking like what's he to do is he to do with the cyber war or is he something deeper and i think something deeper than that it's not just the cyber war he's connected obviously to something uh to do with the timeless child i really like how can he not be? And there's other things that are, are, that give that away. So, like, you know, I, I'm going to talk about that half of the episode first, okay? Because it's sort of, they do kind of go, you know, side by side throughout the episode. And, and it does break it up a little bit. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to talk about him first. And, like, for example, um, you see his, his, him being collected. You see him growing up. Um, you see him going to join the guard. Uh, which is some sort of a military or police thing uh, in Ireland. And, uh, you know, he doesn't say much. He's a bit odd. And, and, you, and uh, you're thinking, like, oh, a child has just mysteriously turned up on someone's door. And we know there's a timeless child. Is he important? Like, is he the timeless child? That's what I was thinking. I was like, are they introducing the timeless child right here, right now, um, as this person? And... You know, it, it just, you see him dealing with, with all sorts of things throughout his life. The, the main thing, I think, what that happens is that, you know, he's chasing a thief and he gets shot and falls off a cliff. Um, and he's totally fine, you know. Forget, you know, forget maybe maybe the bullet hit his medal or something and he was okay. But, like, the fall was huge and he survived. So, obviously, there's something different about him. Could it be Time Lord regeneration energy? I don't know, but it's it's very heavily implied. And but then we sort of see him throughout all his life, and then we see him when he's old, and they're saying, "Oh, your um, congratulations on your retirement." But then as he leaves the guard, he's met with his father and the guy who gave him the job. But both of them are young; they haven't aged. Only Brendan's aged. And then they're like, well, uh, you need to come with us into the back room. And then they attach him to this, this sort of wires and things. And then they tell him, like, oh, you, we're going to have to wipe your memory. And I was like, oh, my gosh, that I was not expecting that. You know, something's going on here. And this is this is huge. This is really going to tie into the next episode. Because it doesn't even it's nothing connected to the cyborg at the moment, but it's I think it's, it's to do with the timeless child. Because at one point uh, the guy puts a clock on the table before they wipe his memory, and um, interesting enough, the reason why they have like or, or at least the reason why I think they've implemented a mind wiping thing or a memory wiping thing uh, is going to be a key player in sort of how you know why one of the doctors can't remember. You know I don't think that's a uh that's there i think i don't think that's a coincidence i think that's gonna play into the next episode a lot um but yeah they, like on it, it it makes for a nice break and it's it's very well done the music is great throughout and, and like you, it makes you really feel connected to this character of brendan and then the, when this twist happens at the same time as the end of the other part of the episode's twist it's it really yeah like there's so many questions now and, and we're gonna have to really wait um, and that's and that's another thing as well. This, we still don't get any answers. So Chris Chibnall, in his writing, he set up the finale to give answers, and now we've been waiting so long. Like we need answers. So 
it's, it's hard to tell like how how good he is as a showrunner of Doctor Who to write like a series arc if all he's been doing is asking questions. But again, we'll have to wait for next week to find out. Um, so onto the um, the sort of cyber war aspect of this episode. Um, it's really cool how like. Uh, they switch between the the sort of the um, the Brendan story and the Doctor story, um, and then uh, so the Doctor appears with uh, Yaz, Ryan, and Graham all on on this planet, this alien planet, and uh, you know I, I don't even know if it's an alien planet actually. It might have been Earth, who knows? But like they're on they they're, they're finding the last survivors of the cyber war, and it's only seven of them, which is which is kind of crazy. And uh, so having, like, used the coordinates that they got from uh, Shelley in the last episode, they're already there. Like, events are already taking place. They don't, there's no TARDIS or anything, which is kind of a bit strange. There's not TARDIS in, the, in this entire episode. Um, but um, uh, they arrive, they help the survivors, and the Doctor's got a plan. Like, she's got multiple things, like a gold particle dispenser, you know, you know, as a nod to the Cyberman's weakness to gold. They got like um, an emotional inhibitor, like an anti-emotional inhibitor to get them thinking about themselves. And uh, they got like a force field or something that, that you know, and, and all the companions, they know their jobs. They got, they got jobs to do and they set them these things up. And all, all the while they're talking to these survivors. But even then the doctor knows that these survivors um, sort of, they don't have time. It feels really urgent, which is really cool. Um, like she, she's talking, like when she's talking to one of the survivors, she's like, I asked for, um, I asked for your help, not for your life story or something like that, uh, you know, and, and really there's no messing around. Um, and it was cool because the first sort of thing, cyber thing that we see uh, in action is these cyber drones, which are a cool new addition to the sort of the cyber army. Um, I thought uh, mixed feelings initially, like on first viewing, because they are literally just Cyberman heads that are floating around and, and shooting things. And I thought, oh, that's a bit, at first thought, I thought, oh, that's really, that's sort of really weird, you know, but the thing is they, they, the destruction they cause in that scene is, is pretty substantial. So, I, and, and, and you know, that the fact that just a Cyberman float inside man head can do that kind of damage is, it sort of sets the scene for a powerful cyber army. So I don't know, maybe it'll, um, uh, it'll you know sit right with me you know in a few years time or something like that because it is like it is doctor who and you know it might be it might be a bit cheesy at times but you know that you know it was it was they, there was a lot of explosions it was really action packed you know and um and, and the thing is they they target the the um the devices that the doctor um has put down so it's like um, the Doctor had a plan, and these Cyberman heads just like totally destroyed that plan. Um, uh, really cool, like destruction scenes. Again, not sure about the Cyberman heads. What do you think about the Cyberman heads? Do you, do you like them or what? like? And the thing is, I like the fact that they're Cyber Cyberman designs. Um, it's cool to see how multiple designs are being used in this episode, and the voices as well. Like the fully voiced Cyber Cyberman is 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 a really cool. Uh, return like for those of you who prefer those designs um, and yeah um, when when they realize that there's not much they can do um, you get the lone side man with his two cyber cyberman guards and uh, the doctor's got a bit of a crisis you know because she's like I, I, you know you get to see her under pressure and you get to see more of uh, angry doctor who's angry at her stubborn companions because the companions are stubborn like they don't want to leave the doctor at all she tells them to go with the human survivors and uh, uh, you know and then she's got to um, distract the cybermen um, again, she says something like, oh, um, we can't go back to the TARDIS. And I'm like, I don't know why. Like, it was a bit of a weird one because uh, it sort of maybe means that the rest of the episode doesn't happen if they go to the TARDIS. But maybe I guess it's because, like, if they go back to the TARDIS and they're easy targets for the Cybermen, um, maybe it's inferred that the TARDIS is a long way away. It's not, not really so clear. Either that or I missed it. But um, yeah, upon uh, trying to distract the Cybermen, the Cybermen go ac actually go after the Companions, which is, again, the Doctor's plan is kind of shattered into a million pieces. Um, Ryan gets separated from Yaz and Graham. Graham gets onto the, the ship and they, and they sort of escape in, in, in this sort of derelict uh, rust bucket of a ship. 
um, which is sort of a really cool because you get there's so many locations in this episode, like the, the the abandoned sort of village that they're all taking refuge in, this sort of bucket of bolt spaceship, um, you know, and that's just the first you know few places. Um, you get sort of uh, you get the first few um, sort of moments of the lone side man in this episode when he goes into the barn, he's looking after two, he's looking for two of the other survivors. Um, straight up kills one of them and then the other one he lets live to sort of to tell other people about the Cybermen um, which is sort of interesting because like he you know it's not logical really you know you think he would kill him there on the spot but that it, it means that the lone Cyberman has this sort of um, personality that uh, you know that he's he's so good you know and like um, he, you know, his, his entire personality is like the Cybermen are the greatest, you know, and it's, uh, it's almost like he worships the Cybermen, uh, you know, he's, uh, you know, he called, like, for example, later on, he calls like a cybership or, you know, a, a ritual site or a shrine, you know, and he has this sort of personality that's really interesting and can, and literally can, like, only be explained by the fact that he, his emotional inhibitor is broken, which is, I think, is really good. He makes for a really good character. Um... And, and a great villain as well. Um, so he's really cool throughout the episode. Um, so when they get on the ship, they're going to go to Ko Shamas and uh, was it the, the bridge or something like that? Or, you know, they have to... Uh, basically, Ko Shamas is a place where they have to get to and then there's this huge sort of doorway or something, which is a gateway to a random point in the universe. So it's like sort of guaranteed escape for the Cybermen because they can't track you, which is again, really cool and really desperate, you know, um, thing really like, like there's a lot of cool ideas in this episode. Um, and it looks awesome. So, um, yeah, there's, um, what, what, what's next? Um, yeah. So the, the Lone Side Man, uh, appears to the doctor, Ryan and is it Ethan on, on a Cyberman ship. Cause they have to steal a Cyberman ship to escape. Presumably because they couldn't get to the TARDIS, and and there's a really cool uh, way of steering the Cyberman ships when they're all sort of got their arms like this, and they you know they're really piloting, and it gives um, I really think it gives like Jodie's um, Doctor a, a, like something to do, like it, it, it's a weird way of piloting a ship, but it, like she obviously knows how to do it, and you know it really it, it's a really cool thing to see Jodie's do that you know like none of the other Doctors may have done. Um, and, you know, he appears to the Doctor and he says they're going to conquer everything and then, and beyond, and she's like, what do you mean beyond? And like, she's going to, like, they're going to kill everything, the Cybermen, so the Cybermen. Um, yeah, so th so it's it's all really sort of tense and, and you can see that this, this long time has kind of taken it personally. Um, uh, and so they got these two, two, two ships, so the Bucket of Bolts and you got the Cyber ship with the Doctor in it. Um, they, the Doctor knows that they're going to go to uh, Ko Sharma's because of Ethan and this Bucket of Bolts is starting to lose power and then you get this moment where the Bucket of Bolts is losing power and you, know, you hear these noises and it's all really kind of eerie and they look out the window and they're in like this huge Cyberman debris field like it, it, like it wouldn't look out of place in like Star Wars or something you know this kind of asteroid field or you know but it's like body parts of Cybermen everywhere which is yet another location that is really cool and because in the distance they can see this huge cyber ship um i really think that the exterior ships in this series have been awesome like the jadoon ship the cyberman ship that last where the cgi has gone clearly um but they they sort of had to figure out um a way to like lose all the power put all the power into the uh, into the air pressure to get them to the cyber ship um to survive because uh, that's going to be the only way again high stakes but you know they managed to get it done um so they arrive in uh, in the cyber ship, which is which is really cool. They start to explore. They think maybe they can get this cyber ship to to work to take them to Ko Shamas. Um, the the inside of the cyber ship. Now again, another awesome location because it really when when they explore it, it really makes the episode seem like they're going deeper into the cyber ship. Um, they visit like you know control and and you know like the warriors, Cyberman. Uh, you know, army room where they're all sort of in stasis. Um, so cool, and like the the reveal of the new design is is really cool as well. When they um uh, they pan up the body, you know, to give a, a proper good look at it. 
really cool dynamics between Graham and, and that woman character. I can't remember her name, but uh, you know, she she likes Graham. She likes Graham. I'm telling you that. Um, it, it's cool to see that kind of dynamic play out. Um, with Graham, I think, because it was it was Ryan, what in Orphan Fifty Five, but you know, no one ever pays attention to Graham, but you know, it's it's really cool. Um, so yeah, then the lone side man and his two cyber guards, they go to the cyber ship to chase after um, that the bucket of bolt ship. When they arrive, you, you get to see the lone side man interact with you know all this new cyber army, this warrior class side man, which is the new designs with the big earmuffs. Um, and he, you know, he, you know, he wants to resurrect them, and he, and he does so. And, and him and his Cyberman do this really weird thing where they like zap him, and there's all sparks flying off the new Cyberman. Um, it's really intimidating. I thought, when that happened, I was like, oh my gosh, you know, some, you know, big, you know, what, what on earth is he doing? And uh, and then the woman says, oh, it's a Cyberman that can make other Cybermans Cybermen scream. And I think, ah, not bad. I could have inferred that from the. Um, from the action, from just looking at it, but you know, it's really cool. Um, and then he awakens the cyber army and they all go after uh, Ryan, Yaz, Graham, and they're, you know, they're running away, they're desperate, you know, and, and how are they going to escape? And that's where the first sort of cliffhanger moment ends. The second cliffhanger moment is the doctor when they go on to, uh, to find Koshamas. Turns out Koshamas is actually the dude. And this outpost, this is a really cool place. Another cool location in this episode where it's like on the coast, get some good shots of the ocean, the pebble beach, the tent that they go into to, to talk about who who uh, this guy is and what this settlement is, which was uh, like uh, protection from the refugees of the cyber war. All in all, it just gives a really good feel that this war's been going on for so long. Like it really builds this world and puts you right at the center of it. Um, and it's easy to follow all the way through. Um, Ko Shamas is telling them that the, the, the bridge or the gateway or whatever is, is on the beach and uh, you have to get closer because it responds to proximity and then like when the doctor goes to check it out this is huge purple sort of gateway portal sort of thing opening up uh, it looks awesome again the CGI is looking like it's being used here like the budget um, and uh, all of a sudden Gallifrey appears and you see the doctor looking at her home planet, which is still destroyed. Um, that's my home planet, she says. And then boom, the master comes out again. Sasha Dewan is back. Um, again, when it happened, I was like, yes, that's awesome. I really wanted to see him back in this series. I, I thought he would be, but obviously he was absent from all the promotional stuff um, that I saw. So um, it makes a really cool moment. And he says, oh, that's an entrance, right? You know, he's, he's cool. Like, what a cool master he is. Um, I really hope we get to see more of him and what he can do in the next episode. Um, as I expect, it'll focus more around them, I think. Um, but yeah, you got these three cliffhangers. You got the the one, the, the Gallifrey and the Master on Koshamas. You know, and who is Koshamas? Because he said like, um, oh, it I, it wasn't like that when I saw it before, referring to Gallifrey. Like, who is he? Is he like a Time Lord as well? Is the Brendan who is having his mind wiped? Is he a Time Lord? Is he the Timeless Child? Who you know? Who are they? It sets up the finale in a really good way. What's going to happen to? Uh, Ryan and uh, sorry Graham and Yaz, you know, are the Cybermen gonna c come and get them? You know, how are they gonna escape from that? And and what are the Cyberman army gonna do? Because it, oh gosh, it's it was such a it was a good episode, a really good episode, set up the finale in a great way. Um, I really think like oh, how am I gonna score this? It's it's such a good episode, um, um, but also very safe. I really, oh, gosh. I like. I really like Spyfall. See, I really like Spyfall Part One. Um, oh, it's it's definitely up there. I'm gonna give it something like it's definitely an eight. I think I'm gonna push it to um, an eight point five. Yeah, go on, eight point five. So it's sort of not. I didn't rate it as high as Spyfall, but like it's up there. It's really cool. Like we just need answers now. We just need answers from Chibnall to see how, how good he is, you know, and, and apparently next week's going to change everything we know. It's going to be 65 minutes episode. Um, apparently we're not we're not going to be ready for this. He's going to drop some huge bomb on us. So uh, I'm looking forward to finding out what that is. And it's going to be a long week uh, to with all these questions about the episode. Solid episode. And I really enjoyed so yeah, uh, that's my review. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Uh, if you like this review, um, 
give it a like, subscribe. We got the CoopaCon uh, video coming out tomorrow. Um, and yeah, uh, next week will be the last review of this series until the special comes out. Uh, so yeah, uh, make sure you uh, tune in and uh, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.